Hello, I'm Jacob from Intrepid Protoworks, and today we're going to go over the two sample independent measures t-test. What the independent measures means is that we are not taking data from the same group more than once, so that we can assume that they are independent groups. This is uh, relevant as it affects how we do our calculation. In our next video, we'll talk about the dependent measures where we look at the same group in a before and after scenario. So to start us off, we're going to go ahead and add in some of the functions that we've seen before. We're going to do our mean, our sam sample standard deviation, our sample standard error, and our variance. In the past, we haven't needed to just look at the variance, but we will need it for the t-test this time. So we're going to go ahead and speed through this because we have already seen all this stuff before. We're going to just copy and paste the variance to do the standard deviation. And then we'll do get sample standard error, and we've gone over this before as well. If you want to see more about those topics, go ahead and uh, reference some earlier videos in the series. So now we start getting into some of the new stuff. So we'll start by defining our pooled standard deviation. This will take two samples because we want to reference the standard deviation of two different samples. We'll get the variance of the first sample, and then we'll get the variance of the second sample. Then we'll also go ahead and calculate the sample size for each sample. Next, we'll go ahead and do a quick if statement to see if the sample sizes are equal. If they are equal, we will use one formula. If they are not equal, we will use another one. So if they are equal, our pooled variance will equal the variance of one sample plus the variance of the other sample and simply divide it by two. And then to get the pooled standard deviation, we simply take that pooled variance and take the square root of it. We can also do that by taking it to the power of one half. If the sample sizes are not the same, we will take the, uh, we'll define a numerator, which will be our sample size one times our variance one minus one, plus our sample size two minus one times our variance two. And this will be divided by our denominator, which is our sample size one plus sample size two minus two. This is our degrees of freedom for the uh, two independent samples t test. The short reason for that is we minus two because there's two samples. There's a longer, better explanation, but let's save that for a little bit further down the line. So this leaves our pooled standard deviation to be our numerator divided by our denominator, uh, taken to the power of one half or the square root, and then we'll return our pooled standard deviation. In the future, we will just use this uh, second formula because they're basically the same thing. At the second formula, we'll always give the correct result. The top formula is just a byproduct of if the two samples happen to be the same size. So starting in on our next function, it will be the two independent samples t-score, and it will take a sample one, a sample two. We'll start off by getting our means, our mean one and mean two using our get mean function. We'll get our pooled standard deviation. And then if our sample sizes are equal, then we'll get our pooled standard error by just taking our pooled standard deviation and multiplying it by 2 divided by your sample size and then taking the square root of that. Let's go ahead and add that asterisk in so they're multiplying by one another. And then our t-score is simply our mean 1 minus our mean 2 divided by our pooled standard error. Now if the sample sizes are not equal, we'll go ahead and print off a quick warning. Once that warning is printed, we will go ahead and calculate our pooled standard error. Like last time, we will start with our pooled standard deviation. However, we're going to multiply it by uh, 1 divided by our first sample size plus 1 divided by our second sample size, and then we'll take that whole part and take the square root of it. Then our t-score again will just be our mean 1 minus our mean 2 divided by our pooled standard error, and we will return t. Looks like we have a quick error to fix here, so we'll go ahead and rename that to pooled standard error. And uh, we need to define our actual sample size. We referenced our sample sizes, but we never actually got them. So let's add that in real quick. After making some space, we're going to go ahead and add a function to get our critical t. This is the same as the one sample t test. We're not going to spend much time on it. And we're just going ahead and uh, speed through all of this. Again, we have seen this in our one sample t test video. So. This is the exact same function that we've already uh, worked with. Now we're going to go ahead and get our p value from our t value using our t and our degrees of freedom. And this again is going to be the same as the one sample t test. So now 
we have all the prerequisite parts to do the actual t-test. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and make a function and we will call it two independent samples t-test. We'll take sample one, sample two, alpha, and a test type. We'll give this a default argument of two-tailed. I usually do not like function names this long. It's not really good practice, but for the sake of the tutorial and for the sake of everybody being able to follow along, we're going to go ahead and have it be as uh, verbose as we need it to be. So to start off with, we're going to get our sample size one and our sample size two. We will calculate our degrees of freedom, which this time again will be sample size one plus sample size two minus two. Next, we will get our critical T value. This will be used to evaluate the significance of our t-test. It will take our alpha and our degrees of freedom and a test type. With the critical T, we will then calculate our actual T value. We will do this by taking the function we just wrote up above, double checking what it takes, and it will take sample one and sample two. Once we have our t-score, we'll go ahead and also get our p value, and we'll get this using get p from t. Then we'll start off by assuming that significance is false. And then we need to go through each of our test types. So starting off, if it's two-tailed, if the T value is less than the negative critical T, or if it is greater than the positive critical T, we will say that the test is significant. So we'll redefine significant to true. Then if it is a one-tailed positive test, we'll denote this by using LF. So if test type equals one-tailed positive, we will look to see if the T is greater than the positive critical T. If this is true, the test is significant. And lastly, we'll do an else if the test type equals one-tailed negative, we'll fix a quick typo, and if the T value is less than the negative critical T, we'll say the test is significant. And then we'll go ahead and return significant T, critical T, and P. Looks like we have an error. Oh, we forgot to actually say that it uh, significant is true. So going back down, we're going to define our uh, confidence errors. We've done this before. This is a couple of videos back. However, it's important to include your confidence intervals in each of these kinds of tests. It's a valuable uh, tool to look at. If you want to see more on confidence intervals, reference our video dedicated to the topic. So now that we have all of the code in place to do a t-test and get our confidence intervals, let's go ahead and do an example. So today we're going to look at the difference between male and female Japanese uh, income. So to do this, we'll go ahead and open up our CSV file that we got earlier in the tutorial series. And we'll go ahead and do some filtering. We will filter out the header. We will filter out if the income is negative or ambiguous. We'll filter out non-applicable uh, replies. We'll filter out minors and then we will look at just uh, if they're Japanese and then if they are male. We will go ahead and append them to the male income data. And then if they are female, we will append them to the female income data. And because we are doing a t-test example, we will then go ahead and just uh, import random and then take a random sample out of those data sets as those data sets are, as the total data set we're taking from is 3 million data points. Obviously those are not all Japanese, but it's uh, definitely a big enough sample that we could do a z-test rather than a t-test. So we're going to do Japanese male income data. We'll go ahead and take a sample size of 100. And then we'll do Japanese female income sample, and then we'll do a sample size of 100 as well. So we will go ahead and fix some typos real quick. Then we will go ahead and get our means for our male and female income samples. We'll go ahead and set our alpha and then set our test type. We'll go ahead and do two tail tests for this example. Uh, go back and uh, yeah, we have some typos still. So we'll go ahead and fix those real quick. And it also looks like we have another error further up in the code. Uh, we had a typo with our row. So now we can go ahead and define our uh, actual t-test. We'll go ahead and calculate our t-test. So we'll do this similar to our last video where we have our sig bool. We'll do t, critical t, and p equals two independent samples t-test. 
going to go up real quick, double check the order of the arguments it takes, sample 1, sample 2, alpha, and test type. So we'll go ahead and add that in. Uh, so Japanese male income sample, Japanese female income sample. I'm going to try not to run this off the edge of the screen. Take our alpha and then our test type. With our t-test set up, we just need to print out the results. So let's do if the test is significant, we will print out a uh, statement indicating that it was significant as well as giving us the some of the descriptive data on it as well. We will also include our p, t, and critical t. Then we will go ahead and just take this whole thing and copy and paste it for if it's not significant and just say the independent to, uh, independent means to sample t-test was not significant at alpha where p at the t equals and our critical t is. So now let's go ahead and get our confidence intervals. We'll do Japan male lower, Japan male upper, Japan male error, and we'll do our get confidence interval. And this takes our uh, Japanese male income sample as well as our alpha value. Then we will do the same thing, Japan female lower, Japan female upper, Japan female error, and we'll do get confidence interval, and that'll be Japanese female income uh, sample. I'll just copy and paste that in rather than type it out. And I'll also take our alpha. So that gives us the data for our confidence interval. And now let's go ahead and plot our confidence intervals. We did this in more detail in a previous video, so we'll go ahead and go through this quickly. Again, we went over this in our graphing confidence intervals videos. So we'll define our labels, our means, uh, a list of our confidence intervals, our positions where the bars are, and then we'll go ahead and do our actual plot our bar graph. Take positions, means, color, white error, width, align, the color of our errors, and it'll take a size of the error bars. And then we'll do our next label, male and female, Japanese, American income, our Y label, mean income in dollars, and we'll call the title mean income across male and female Japanese Americans. Then we'll go ahead and show our plot. Go ahead and get rid of a whole bunch of our white space real quick. And that should leave us okay to save and run. Configure it to run in an external, dedicated external console. And there we have it. We can go ahead and resize this to see the, uh, the titles correctly. We'll go ahead and go ahead and, uh, Change our P to give us something that makes a little bit more sense. So one minus P will be a little bit better to read. Significant at alpha equals 0 0.05, where P is really small. And we can see our confidence intervals are also pretty small as well. I'm going to run this again, just in as an example, see a little bit of this in the variance. And notice that not every time uh, the values are going to be exactly the same. That's because we're taking a sample. But you'll notice, especially with a sample size of 100, the overall results of concluding that the samples are different from one another is significant most of the time. You can see our p-value is 0, 0, 0, 0008 with a t of 3.23. Our critical t is 1.98. And we can see our mean incomes for male and female. So that does it for this video. Next time, we'll go over a version of the t-test that does not assume equal variances. This version of the t-test assumes that the standard deviations or the variances are the same for the population. This is also called uh, the Welsh's t-test. We will also, if we have time, go over the dependent means t-test as well. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe.